What's up guys, my name is Fran and welcome back. Today we're checking out the Intel Skull Canyon Nook. Now if you're not familiar with the Nook, let me fill you in real quick. Nook stands for Next Unit of Computing. This is Intel's take on the way future computers will be. Currently right now, desktop machines are big and clunky. They need to take up a lot of desk space or a lot of space under your desk. Intel is promoting this new smaller form factor that packs the power of a desktop PC, but offering you the form factor of something small like a laptop, or actually a lot smaller than something like a laptop. So the Skull Canyon Nook has actually been boasted as the most powerful Nook ever made. So I decided to pick one up for myself and put that claim to the test. Now the Skull Canyon Nook is actually a bare bone computer. What that means is that you are gonna get the computer itself, but it is gonna be missing parts such as the hard drive, the RAM, and the operating system. So let's run through the specs. My Skull Canyon Nook was sporting an Intel i7-6770HQ CPU, which clocks in at about 2.6 gigahertz for the base clock and 3.5 gigahertz for the boost clock. I threw in 32 gigabytes of Kingston DDR4 Fury memory, and two 512 Samson 950 Pros running in RAID 0, totaling out at about one terabyte of storage. In regards to I.O., the Intel Skull Canyon Nook comes pretty well equipped. On the back, you'll find the optical audio port, an ethernet port, two USB 3.1A ports, a display port, an HDMI port, and a Thunderbolt 3 port. Now let's talk performance. So what I decided to do is actually run a few benchmarks on both my Nook and compare it up against Wally that's rocking a full-fledged 6700K CPU, a GTX 1070, and 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM with the EVGA Stinger motherboard. Now I know it's not completely fair to compare the two, but I did just wanna see how the CPU would perform and if it actually does have that full-fledged desktop punch. After checking out the results, even though Wally still outclassed the Nook, it was impressive to see how much it held its own against its competitor. So when I ran them both on Geekbench, the Nook came in with a single core score of 3667, while Wally came in with a single core score of 4278, and a multi core score on the Nook of 13999, while Wally came in at about 16799. So as you can see, Wally is a lot faster, but it's pretty close. It's not that far off from a full fledged desktop PC. And remember, that fraction of size is extremely important for some people. I threw it up against Dota, Heroes of the Storm, Overwatch, World of Warcraft, and Castle Crashers. And it performed admirably. So it seems like a trend in the hardware enthusiast market is actually to keep going smaller. And I think the Intel Skull Canyon Nook is actually a product of that trend. So I guess when it comes down to it, the real question is, is the Skull Canyon Nook right for you? Well, I mean, I really don't know. Are you strapped for space? Maybe you don't want a big hulking mid-sized desktop or even a small form factor ITX case in your room. Maybe you're one of those people who doesn't like notebooks and prefers a desktop. There's a lot of people out there like that. Now, if you ask me what I would use the Intel Skull Canyon Nook for, I'm actually thinking a dedicated streaming PC. So I'll be making a video that highlights how you can use an Intel Skull Canyon Nook to actually create a dedicated streaming PC alongside the Elgato HD60 capture card. Okay guys, well that's gonna wrap up this review of the Intel Skull Canyon Nook. So if you like this video and you wanna see more content like this, go on and hit that like button. And hopefully I see you guys in my next video. This is Fran signing off. Hope you guys have a good one.